today on Seattle Refined. He might just be the coolest dad in the Northwest. Find out what's behind this backyard roller coaster. Plus, dogs make really, really bad <laughs> models. They don't sit still, they're all over the place. Beloved Northwest pets leap onto the canvas for all eternity. Meet the artist making it happen. And life after The Bachelor. One of the worst parts of the show is... Seattle's newest reality star tells all. Hi, I'm Taylor from The Bachelor. Seattle Refined starts now. Hey everybody, welcome to Seattle Refined. I'm Gar Swanson coming to you from Honor Coffee. Well, Bachelor fans are hopefully feeling some satisfaction today. After weeks of dating drama, cat fights, and Chardonnay tears, we finally know who Nick picked. Will you accept my final rose? Yes. On the final episode last night, it's Nick proposed to Vanessa, which, let's be honest, wasn't really a shocker. Even though it wasn't the most dramatic rose ceremony ever, our refined team is going to miss those crazy Monday nights. But now that it's over, we wanted to get the real dirt on this past season from a Seattle contestant. Taylor was in the middle of a lot of the drama this season. Luckily, she spilled some secrets to Refined. We have a lot of Bachelor fans here in the Como building, so we thought, why not grab a few and have them ask Taylor their burning questions. What was the best and worst part of the whole experience for you? One of the best parts, 100%, was meeting all the women. Um, the friendships that you gain from the show are unlike any other I have in my life. Vanessa, I, and she's someone I got really close to in the house. One of the hardest parts is being that vulnerable and that exposed to like all of America and the world, frankly. Well, because of that, like, would you go back and do it all again? It's really, it's so crazy. Uh, there's so many reasons to not, but then there are also a lot of great reasons to go back. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So like going into like your personal life, like how like overall has like this affected like your career and just like trying mm -hmm. to be like a normal person now, like how yeah. has it affected it? It's very strange because I still see myself as a normal person and I'm like, I'm just Taylor. Yeah. Uh, and then I see other people's reactions to me when they meet me and I'm like, Whoa. My career, it's impacted in a few different ways. It's tough because there are some legitimate people who really want help that are reaching out to me, and then there are some who are just fans who kind of want to use it as a way to meet me. If you could go back and do anything differently, would you? Part of me says no. Uh, the other part of me reflects and says, you know, yeah, like, there are definitely things I could have done differently. For several yeah. episodes there, it was like the main plot line was the you versus Corinne, and it wasn't yeah. even about Nick. No. Yeah. 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 Do you feel like, are you, are you disappointed with some of the edits that the producers chose <clears throat> to make, or were you, are you kind of at a place where you're just kind of understanding that that's TV, and that's kind of what happened? I feel like I'm at a point where I understand, like, it is what it is, like, that was, that was TV, and, um... It's very strange to watch back because I'm like, I didn't realize things were that dramatic. Yeah. <laughs> you know, seeing her reactions to things did reaffirm like, oh wow, okay, it really was intense. It really was that dramatic. Something I was really curious about is kind of like the alcohol situation. Is alcohol something you felt like, is it always available? Do they have people walking around with it? Or is it pretty much just like a choice thing as well? Probably? Yeah. So our season was actually one of the like heaviest drinking seasons <laughs> the producers told us. Uh, but another piece I think that maybe will help people gain some insight into my experience is that I actually don't drink alcohol at all. Um, so I was the only person in the house who was 100% sober 100% yeah. of the time. When Corinne got the bouncy house, mm -hmm. did you guys get to play with the bouncy house yeah. afterwards? So yeah, there were, I think Jasmine Ashley had asked like, can I go in the bouncy house? and like. People were not letting her. So it was <laughs> like no one was That's allowed to go in the mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we'll are see. you ready to date? Like, are you like at the point where you want to still meet people and go yeah. out and like? Yeah. You yeah. Are? Okay. Um, definitely open to that. I mean, I I love dating. It's mm -hmm. super. It sucks sometimes, yeah. and I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> why am I doing this? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I love getting to know other people and. I like beards and I like guys that <laughs> like can challenge me and have really awesome conversations. Mm -hmm. Taylor, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. It was thank kind you of guys. good to hear the other side of the story. And as a Seattleite, we were kind of all 
Team Taylor. Yeah. Uh, just because we're Pacific Thanks. Northwest Pride. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for having me, and yeah. I appreciate all your questions. We don't have to wait too long for the next season. Filming is underway right now with Rachel, the first African-American bachelorette to ever be on the show. We can't wait. And for a complete wrap-up of last night's finale, head to SeattleRefined.com. Not only are we huge Bachelor fans on this show, the Refined team also has a passion for pets. We do weekly rough find features on our website, and of course, we love a good dog story. But we recently met one local woman who may have us beat. Refined's Malia Karlinski shows us her puppy love has turned into an art form. With each brushstroke, Jody Sarah Masichek captures the vibrant personalities of her subjects in bold, bright colors. She's hoping her portraits make her clients smile and get a wag or two. My art is, you know, boom, you know, right in the center of the canvas, and I outline things in black, um, but somehow people respond to it. This artist specializes in pet portraits, and these subjects don't enjoy sitting still. Like Bert, for example, our own refined executive producer, Scott Rondo's fur baby. Dogs make really, really bad <laughs> models. They don't sit still, they're all over the place. So yeah, so a photo is the best. And the photo will dictate to me kind of, you know, the kind of energy. And usually it's happy, but occasionally it's been kind of sad. That's what happened when a client commissioned her to paint a portrait of Sonny. Shortly after the painting was delivered, Jody Sarah got some unexpected news. She said, you know, I, I don't know how to tell you this, but I really love having a painting, but, you know, Sonny passed away. Just the tears just came because I felt like I knew this dog. And she even says now that, you know, every time she passes, you know, the, the dog's portrait, she'll say, hi, Sonny. I think it's my job to kind of, you know, honor the um, relationship between, between people and their pets. And I started this series of historical pets of importance. This one is actually a painting of Hachiko, who lived in the 20s in Japan. The dog would follow the owner every day um, to work to the train station and would wait for the owner. Although the owner unexpectedly died at work, Hachiko kept going to that train station to meet him for nine years. I really wanna uh, bring this you know, dog to life again because it really is, represents loyalty beyond logic. Eager to spread that love to more potential pet owners, Jody Sarah donates her talent to spotlight certain pets at Woodenville's Homeward Pet Shelter. She's offered to do portraits for these longer term residents to help bring some exposure to them and then when they get adopted, their new family gets to take the portrait home with them. Right now we have one on the wall for Cooper who's been with us for several months um, as he's going through surgery for his uh, knee repair. In her backyard, Jody Sarah takes a break from creating with her own personal muses and BFFs, Ranger and Sadie. Really the most um, you know, special animal in the world to that person is their pet. For more information on how you can turn your pet into a work of art, log on to seattlerefined.com. <laughs> Seattle Refined is just getting started. We were all completely overwhelmed. We were totally blown away. Uh, by the response. A cornerstone of the airwave celebrates a new lease on life. But first, are you ready for Seattle's urban evolution? I can pull out my phone if I forgot to lower the blinds. I can hit a button. No matter where I am in the world, I can lower them. Prepare to be blown away as Refined explores the city's first high-tech high-rise. Welcome back to Seattle Refined, I'm Gard Swanson. No doubt about it, Seattle is one of the top tech cities in the entire world. From Amazon to Microsoft, we are constantly impressed with the groundbreaking gadgets hitting the market. But it's not just products anymore. Seattle will soon be home to one of the first high-tech high-rises with cutting-edge technology. Thanks to our sponsors at Nexus, Refined got a behind-the-scenes look at the future of condo living in today's urban evolution. Consider Seattle the chosen one. Out of major cities across the globe, a top development firm decided the Emerald City should be the home of Nexus. Our developer at Berard Group 
looked at the fundamentals of the city of Seattle. We have an incredibly smart and innovative mindset here in the city. And in a high-tech city, it's just about time that a high-tech high-rise kept pace. The 41-story condominium tower that will go up at 1200 Howell Street will have serious high-tech perks for residents, stuff we've never seen before. I think it's fantastic that Burrard uh, wanted to bring in leaders of industry. We've got Circle that's developing the Zen app. So what Zen does is it, it, it becomes your digital concierge. You will be able to interact with other members of uh, or other residents inside the building. We also have a marketplace where uh, different vendors are gonna be able to put their services. So one of the interesting components here is the EcoScore, and the idea here is this is your leaderboard for all of the top uh, uh, residents inside of this space who are focused on uh, the green aspects of uh, urban living. Well, under analytics, it's going to be able to show you um, how much uh, electricity usage you've actually uh, set up. That will keep track of this usage, send you alerts and updates if you're going above your daily sort of spend. The Zen app also connects to condo features from y Plants to make life even easier. y Plants can provide your automated shades, your lighting control, your audio video, your security, uh, anything you need in your unit electronically to enhance your lifestyle. I can pull out my phone if I forgot to lower the blinds, I can hit a button. No matter where I am in the world, I can lower them, raise them up. I have my babysitter at home and she doesn't know how to work my television, I can program it for her. It's just, it's super easy and that's the goal. But you don't have to wait until Nexus is built to see the condo of the future. Right now, the Nexus Sales Center has a first of its kind living lab so homeowners can explore the new technology. And it doesn't stop there. It is unrealistic. Never you have seen anything like that before. People can get a virtual reality tour of the future Nexus site. Real estate is the most important financial decision people make. And tools like the HoloLens let you visualize that, interact with spaces that have not been built before. You can really see what, where they'll be living, what that neighborhood is going to look like five years from now. In this view, you can see that there's two more skyscrapers coming up. Um, there's Metropolitan Park. There's the i5 that helps you put this location in reference. You can see how the Nexus building is architected, where the sections are, where the amenities will be, where the lobby is, where the parking is. Life with technology that is embraced, uh, the architecture that is distinctive, the front and center location, and it just, uh, it's just such an appropriate delivery uh, for the 2020 vision that we see here in downtown Seattle. Are you ready for downtown living? Take Refine's Where Should You Live personality quiz to find out at seattlerefine.com slash nexus. When you take the quiz, you'll be entered into our Urban Evolution giveaway. The grand prize is an electric bike from Rad Power Bikes, a $500 gift card to Alchemy Collections, that's Seattle's go-to for modern and affordable furnishings, plus $200 to Daniel's Broiler. Again, head to seattlerefine.com slash nexus for a chance to win. Refine will be right back, but first, our Urban Evolution Question of the Day brought to you by our sponsor, Realogix Sotheby's International Realty. I own a house but want to move to the city. What's a good option? Well, it sounds like you might be a move down buyer, and I have a lot of those as clients right now. Some are considering the location. They want to be down by the city and have a more lock and leave lifestyle. Others who are thinking, my kids are grown, my house is big, I don't want to maintain the big yard anymore. What I'm recommending my clients to do is to consider a purchase in one of these new luxury high-rises that are being built. For as little as a 10% earnest money right now, you can lock in today's pricing on that unit, select your amenities, and you don't need to close until 2019, 2020. These new luxury high-rises offer are chock full of amenities and really are kind of a hive lifestyle where they have workspaces, concierge, your dry cleans dropped off. They've got dog run places and rooftop decks. So they're not the condominiums we're used to seeing down here. They're really quite wonderful. Welcome back to Refined, I'm Gard Swanson. Well, the call letters may be different, but the song remains the same at one Northwest radio station. Last year, thousands of loyal listeners helped raise millions to save Pacific Lutheran University's public radio station, KPLU, from being sold. 
and as Refine's John Prentice discovered, one of the station's most enduring voices couldn't be more grateful. I hold Jazzoids next time we're behind the big red switch. Let's play a little music. Have fun. KMKX. I've been a jazz fan since I was a kid uh, when my Uncle Paul sent me a collection of records. And I just knew right from the start the first record I played was uh, a Billy Holiday record. You go to my head. Dick Stein has been on the air with 88.5 since 1992 and says playing jazz over the airwaves in the Puget Sound area is his dream job. It's a big jazz town, Seattle and Tacoma and points north and south. It's just great music. It's fun to listen to. It's enjoyable, and that's what we try to play. But last year, his dream job almost vanished when Tacoma-based 88.5, then KPLU, almost got bought out by Seattle competitor KUOW. Over 18,000 listeners didn't like the notion of 88.5 changing or going silent and pulled together $7 million to keep the station just the way it is. We were all completely overwhelmed. We were totally blown away. Uh, by the response. It's, it's wonderful to know that people like what we're doing so well. And of course, we're a dual format station. It's not just jazz, but uh, it's news as well, jazz news and uh, NPR news. And I think that was a big driver behind people's decision to, uh, to save the station. One change for the now listener-owned station, new call letters. So is there any trick to this? Well, you've got to cup your hand behind your, your ear. Like this? Yeah, like why, why do I have to do that? Then you'll be just like Gary O. Get up very close to the microphone. Okay, like That's this? When, I, when a guy loves a microphone very much, John. You're listening to 88.5 KNKX. Yeah, why don't you leave your application on your way up? Don't tell my boss. Okay, I promise. <laughs> Stein says he'll continue doing what his listeners love, playing jazz on the radio. But what does that big red switch do? It's better that you just don't know. John Prentice, Seattle Refined. To learn more about that story, log on to our website. We'll be right back, but first, our Tech Tango Tip of the Week. Today's tip is a guaranteed smile maker. If you have a friend who has a birthday or is down on their luck, try sending them a fun and personalized e-card. I get one every year on my birthday from a dear friend that lives across the country. I look forward to it, and it always puts a smile on my face. Here's a quick preview of this year's card. Sing it out I want to celebrate. Put it up in life. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> See, no one else deserves to be celebrated like you. There are multiple companies that do e-cards. This one is from American Greetings. They have a large variety of options that you can preview on their site. Send an e-card for birthdays, get well, love, thank you, or holidays. You can make anyone's day brighter. I'm Francie Black. For more great tips, visit techtangotoday.com. Welcome back to Refined, I'm Gard Swanson. You know, I consider myself a pretty good handy guy, but when it comes to this next DIY project, I have to admit, it is way beyond my skill level. Not only am I impressed, but my kids are insanely jealous of what one Oak Harbor dad pulled off. Como's Christian Drew went to check it all out. A quick little safety and make sure everything's still really good. Scott Brazelton likes a good project. He's built fences and a barn. And I go really fast. But his most ambitious project yet. You ready? Yeah. Here you go. Is this backyard roller coaster <laughs> for his three-year-old son, Wyatt. Yeah, we went to Disneyland, and um, he just loved this really simple coaster that they had there. Brazelton was planning to build a treehouse in the backyard, but decided to build this complex coaster instead. Yeah. Well, we just decided to go for it, and uh, if, if it was a if it was a complete failure, then that's what it was. But it was a fun project, and I mean, what kids don't like coasters, right? So this coaster wasn't just about the challenge. <laughs> Brazelton built it to spend quality time with his son. Me, me, ah. he received Brazelton's a Navy pilot and was deployed in the Persian Gulf when Wyatt was born. Being in the military, we are gone a lot. Uh, it's, it's a great career, great opportunity. Uh, but the time at home definitely counts and definitely matters. So uh, this was a kind of a way to bring us all together, do something constructive and, and uh, spend time together doing something fun. I, I love it, it's great. Yeah, yeah. By the way, that roller coaster costs about $1,000 to build and there's a weight limit, 65 pounds, and Scott says he tested it before putting his son for a ride. 
Pretty amazing, right? All right, that'll do it for today's show. We'll see you next time right here on Seattle Refined.